Well, uh, boys and girls, it's silly season. You know how it is when we talk about the Cleveland Browns, and especially if you don't make the playoffs. We got a big story from one Tony Grossi detailing what exactly uh, Mr. D. Podesta does for this organization. Me and Jeff will d- dig into it. Some kind of scathing things. We'll give you our take on it. Uh, a lot of hot takes in this one. We'll unpack it for you. Uh, and we'll talk about what does D. Podesta have to do with play calling? How does this involve Kevin Stefanski in the organizational rundown? Second segment, we're definitely going to get into this. Are the days of Nick Chubb being the focal point of, of this offense gone? It's going to be some warm weather. Jeff and I believe that the Cleveland Browns are scheduled to air the, thing, air the thing out of this football this weekend against Washington. We'll talk about the next level or where we go with the offense uh, for the Cleveland Browns. And in the last segment, uh, we'll talk about and preview the game a little bit. Washington commanders are going to give you something up front that frankly the Cleveland Browns want to be in, in the future. They would love to have the defensive tackles and, and, and really good ends that you're going to see here in Washington. We'll talk about how that presents itself, how that's going to give the Browns some trouble and how they go about attacking that. And we'll do that in the last segment. And of course we'll do it all coming up on a locked on Browns podcast. You are locked on Browns. Your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound LGB on the LOB, the Locked On Browns podcast brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day, we appreciate everybody who makes Locked On Browns their first listen, whether it's on your favorite podcast app, of course, here on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe, notifications on, throw the likes on the episodes, free promotion for your boys. We don't ask you guys for much. Um, and of course, we got Roku. Go ahead, search Locked On Cleveland Sports. You will find the Locked On uh, Locked On Browns podcast, the Locked On Guardians podcast, the Locked On Cavaliers podcast, and of course, you will find Garrett Bush at G Bush ninety one from the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. They are all week long on YouTube, eleven to one. The Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, of course. Garrett host the Barbershop ninety two three. The fan Saturday mornings, always other appearances where you can see Garrett there. Pre game, post game coverage. Season dying down here a little bit. G. Bush, you know, maybe the seven days talking three times a day is going to lighten up here a little bit for G. But always in, always working, always putting it in, Mr. G. Bush. Your host, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. Uh, throw a follow over there at Lockdown Browns, uh, the show account. Make sure you're following over there. Um, in the infancy of Lockdown Browns, there were plenty of discussions about a certain – Beat writer in the Cleveland Browns area. And to his credit, he's kind of kept himself out of the thick, out of the fire here for a while. Um, But if you didn't, go ahead and check out Tony Grossi's uh, article uh, from yesterday. Um, And and we've gone into analytics a bunch over the years, you know, with the show and obviously the way the Browns are currently constructed. Um, And the most pure and simplistic way to put it is what is analytics? Analytics is making decisions by gathering almost all the information that you can get. So Paul DePodesta, and this is kind of where it gets confusing. And so many people are ready to fire him or so many to brand him a genius. Um, Is he calling plays? No. Paul DePodesta's main job is to basically pour through numbers. Over and over, numbers, 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 numbers. And what is his job? His job is to make sense of the numbers. So for everybody with the Nick Chubb 20 carries equals a Browns win, no. (laughs) It's not Adelaide's kids. Um, And this whole thing about chunk plays and, and, you know, trying a 13-yard pass play, more important than four-yard running plays. The key is a good running play is five yards. A good run, a good rush of the football is five yards. Um, but when you factor in a negative two, a one, then a negative one, all of a sudden gets misconstrued. You saw the old thing being played today from Joe Thomas back in the day. Everybody wants to look at yards per carry and have that be the be all end of all. That's not it. It's it's a good tool, 
but rushing efficiency is more important. Are you getting third and ones? Are you getting fourth and ones? Are you taking three, four tries to score from first and goal on the one? Are you punching in on your first shot? Paul D. Podesta basically provides the most information you can when running your offense, when calling your plays. And the numbers will equate to it. And if you look at the NFL right now, you know, who's maybe the standard of the league? Kansas City Chiefs? Yeah, they do a lot of chunk plays to throw the football. Buffalo Bills. What do you think made acquiring Stefan Diggs so important for them? Was getting a receiver that they felt, and keep in mind, Josh, Josh Allen wasn't there yet, but they felt that they needed a supreme talent to play with a quarterback they felt was going to end up being a supreme talent. Justin Herbert, when he's got Mike Williams and he's got Keenan Allen, guess what? He's good. The whole thing, and it's the boogeyman of it. And look, if you, you know, and, and Pete used to say this for years here when we do shows together. If you got a cell phone, you do analytics. <laughs> you, you don't even realize it, but you do. When you're online shopping, do you look around and see if you can get something for a better price? That's using an analytic world. Paul DePodesta's job is to provide information. Is he calling the plays? Is he running the offense? No, none of that. He is basically getting these guys the information they need to make the best decisions possible. Now, if you disagree with it and you don't like it due to wins and losses, I truly truly get it and this trend that is going to come this way and we'll get to this more here in segment two it's going to become more of a factor the the end of this year and going into next year as you get more acclimated to your star quarterback Deshaun Watson Jay you know this is this this is uh <laughs> this is fascinating I think that I think the uh I, I had part of the article pulled up um, and I think where this gets, where, where a lot of people were, were being like, oh, this is sensationalized. This is crazy. Um, uh, it says a person formerly worked in the Browns football uh, operations recently gave um, the land on demand insight into the influence of Deep Podesta and how a coach may elect to buy in as a means of keeping his job. Mr. Haslam believes in the analytics so much. The source said in an, ele- in an electronic uh, message. I think uh, head coaches try to please him by throwing the ball. We sat in countless meetings about how important it is to throw the ball. Four yard run was of no value of any analytical chart. And it was, uh, it was about 13 yard passes and more only runs of seven yards were of value. Deep Odessa came in with the, with, with that sum of magical score. Now here's, here's the point. I think the, the, the angle that we look at this thing is you, you look at it like this. You know, when I used to take leadership classes and classics, it, it, when you're talking about, you know, you know, constructing and leading people in corporate America, they tell you that you have to be somewhat transparent in what you're saying so that the people will have a level of buy in to what you're saying. Right. And to me, the Cleveland Browns, um, the analytics of what they're doing is fine. You know, analytics. Um, I went to business school. I can understand statistics and I can understand probability and economics and all that stuff. Here's the problem. The problem is when you have an organizational top down, you know, structure and people don't know what that top down structure is. It gives you an opportunity for people to make up their own narrative. Right. In the void of any information, in the void of any communication, in the void of any explanation you now have an opportunity where people can come in and say, well, they don't really like the ball, run the ball because Nick Chubb doesn't get it 20 times. They don't, uh, well, we don't know if Kevin Stefanski has the ability to fire Joe Woods because we don't even know who's his boss. He was hired before Andrew Barry, and Andrew Barry, they brought back, um, and he was on the 1-31 in organization. Uh, Dee Podesta was a baseball guy. What exactly does he know about football, and how is he in here making, what decisions does he make? So when you don't have a clear-cut answer on any of those, you make your job exponentially harder, right? Because now what it does is not only don't the the media know, the fans don't know, and you you don't have to tell them anything, but what it makes your players do is question, are we in the right place? Are we in the right system? And do these guys have enough confidence in what they're saying? for us to follow through with it every single week when we don't have wins. See, it's easy when you're getting wins and going to the playoffs. No one's questioning this. Think about it. When they went to the playoffs during COVID, anybody question any of this? Nope. 
when you start taking L's, people be peeking and looking and tucking what's under here. And well, what? Because people trying to find answers, Jeff. And right now, six wins is not enough to keep the keep the uh, red meat off the table because people looking for answers. Oh, that also might be it, too. I mean, look, you're serving burgers for lunch on Tuesdays. Every week you serve burgers for lunch on Tuesdays, the Browns don't win. Or Cade York misses a kick. Um, a lot. Of, I mean, but this has been the case here for the last three years, and obviously Paul DePodesta has been here longer than that. Um, but the point of it is it, it, it's a tool, just like anything else. You know, we have John Coscawania all, uh, all the time here from PFF. And yep. John will be the first one to tell you about PFF. It's a tool. You never see John Costco come on here and say, this is the be-all, end-all. This is it. That's it. You know what I'm saying? There are players who look good. There are players who look good under a PFF scope and are good players. There are players who look bad under a PFF scope and are still good players. Taking this type of information and this fact-checking and running numbers, it shouldn't lead you to say, I have to do something this way or I have to do something this way. But you do do it this way and it doesn't work out, then you can kind of go back and say, well, you know, we went against it. Maybe next time we shouldn't do that. The other problem you have with this is with these numbers, and look, a lot of this stuff is available. Obviously, you know, every team has their guys who do these type of things, is it putting the Browns in spots where they're too predictable. And that's probably the biggest question that you have with all of this is are they looking at it too much that where the decisions that are being made on certain situations, play calling, scheme, that's uh, personnel scheme that's going on in the field, is that maybe tipping the hand? Certainly and, something to ponder. Go ahead, Jake. And let me throw this out real quickly, uh, Jeff. And here's what, hurt, here's what hurts as well. When you have words that came out years ago, remember this, when, when, when the old call for Ray Farmer was, Jimmy wants Johnny to play. <laughs> get Johnny in the game. When that happens, you gotta you gotta realize now anything is valid because people gonna say, "Well, I didn't believe it back then." You you ask somebody, "Did you you know? Did you know or do you believe that Jimmy Haslam said put Johnny Manziel in the game over Brian Hoare, even though they were seven and four and working and, and getting some good things done?" They said, "Heck, yeah, I believe that." So now you set yourself up for an organization. Any conspiracy theory sounds. 48% plausible because you did kind of tell him to go put Johnny Manziel in the football game. And we know how that turned out. So, you know, it's just one of those things with the Browns where they, it just seems like they just can't catch a break. And these are the type of stories that's going to rear his ugly head all, all season because now that, 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 that drum beat is starting already up, Jeff. You see it the last two games of the season and, and you know what that means. We've been here long enough to understand what, what that means for the off season. Uh, no question, and this will allow for a great segue from segment one to segment two as far as Deshaun Watson here over the last two weeks and you know what we ultimately see becoming of this Cleveland Browns offense, certainly in 2023. Jeff Lloyd, Garrett Bush, your latest Locked On Browns. I'm really geeked out by our new partner and sponsor of today's episode, the mobile game Ultimate Football GM. Have you ever dreamed of becoming an NFL GM and managing your football franchise? Well, your dream can come true. And this game is definitely for you. You manage every strategic aspect of your team, play through the season, and lead your team to glory. You're responsible for hiring the right coaches and coordinators, trading players, making draft picks, navigating your franchise through free agency and the draft and all the ups and downs of a season. All this in a challenging and realistic game world. Ultimate Football GM is completely free and playable offline. Play on the go as you want and when you want to. I'm into it. I have a lot of key free agents I have to work through. I have players retiring due to age. I got some players I got to cut because they just flat out stink. Locked, <laughs> Locked on Browns listeners can get a 100% free boost to the franchise when using the promo code Locked On, all caps, in the game store. That's Locked On in all caps. So make sure to check it out today. To download the game, just visit ultimate-gm.com or look it up in the app stores. That's ultimate-gm.com. Ultimate Football GM, start your dynasty today. Welcome back to the Locked on Browns podcast. G. Bush in the building, Jeff Lloyd in the building. We want to thank you guys for always supporting us wherever you download your podcast. Um, you know, we want to thank you for supporting us over on YouTube, over 4,000 views as well right now. Um, you know, we'll continue to do this. I'm looking forward to it because this offseason, 
Um, it's going to be a place where there's going to be a lot of shakeups. Uh, you're going to have moving free agency guys. And, and, and the great thing about it, me and Jeff will be able to get into talking about some free agents, some names that we believe can help um, this Browns team get better, especially when you don't have to strategize without a number one pick. So if you want, want all the Browns information, if you want the insides, you want the, the minutia, the, the reports, the people, this is the place for you to get your information on the Browns offseason, the pivotal Browns offseason in 2023. Make sure you subscribe to the Locked On Browns podcast and continue to make us the first listen of each and every day. One of the things that we believe that's going to change a little bit, Jeff, in 2023 is um, I, th I think the Browns are going to move into um, where they want to be. Um, and when I say where they want to be, where they envision themselves being, is Deshaun Watson throwing the football. I think this is the last year Nick Chubb will be considered to be the forefront of your offense. We kind of already see the writing on the wall. The reason why Kareem Hunt wasn't used very much is why would you use Kareem Hunt when you're going to be using David Belmore? Why would you be, you know, running the ball with three, four running backs and having those guys get when you need Anthony Schwartz and you need Donovan People Jones to develop David and Joku? These are the names you're going to hear a lot more. And I, I believe when you look at the way they, they want to run their offense and what they think is going to be most successful, which if you, you got a Deshaun Watson and you think he's a top five player, of course you're going to throw the football more. Um, so I think next year you'll see uh, the development in, in the reign, sort of, so to speak, handed over to Deshaun Watson. Harrison Bryant has been a lot less noticeable. Where Farrell Brown and – all the tight ends and all that other stuff that we were running, a lot of we don't see the bootlegs. We see a lot more shotgun. We see a lot more wide open stuff. Jeff, I, I think this is the direction the Browns have always wanted to go in. They just never had the personnel at quarterback to do it. I think now you start to see those keys handed over to Sean Watson, and this team will be your, you know, the 21st century version of of you know a passing attack that gets the ball downfield or at least tries to. Your thoughts? This is going to not even start in 2023, Garrett. This is going to start Sunday. We're looking at possibility of high 50, 60 degrees in Washington. So you're talking about a 75 degree difference from what the Browns have played this past Saturday. Um, and so, you know, you say 60s. This is it. It, it. it is going to be the Deshaun Watson show. And a couple of reasons you're going to trend towards this with being eliminated and Nick Chubb, you know, going to play. And there's no reason for Nick Chubb not to play if he wants to play. He's not going to see a lot of action, I don't think, because this is going to be the Deshaun Watson show, and it is going to start this week. You, Yes, you have a great offensive line. You have a great running game. You have a great running back in Nick Chubb. You just gave this quarterback $238 million guaranteed. So to that offensive line, that's great that you guys are great in the run game because it's going to need to come and pass pro as well. Nick Chubb. Your days of not getting 20 carries a game are probably going to continue. The weeks Nick Chubb will see 20 carries in a game is when everything goes right. And we get to about halfway to go in the fourth quarter. And the Browns want to take a lead and basically end the game. And how will they do that? They'll most likely do it with Nick Chubb. But how this team's going to go for the next two weeks and for the foreseeable future is going to go off of the arm of Deshaun Watson. It's simple. You know, you have Amari Cooper. You have Donovan Peoples-Jones. You have David Njoku. You're going to work in the young guys here. And I got news for all these young guys here. Don't get too comfortable. If your name's not Amari Cooper, David Njoku, or Donovan Peoples-Jones, I don't know what you're guaranteed for next year. Because there will be veterans that want to come play with Deshaun Watson. The Browns will look to add a rookie wide receiver in this draft. Those analytic charts and from... Grossi's article yesterday, the one take the way you take from that is that this team is not basically even slowly going to move away from being a run first offense or even a 50 50 type of offense. They're going to turn their back on it 100%. And it is all going to be about Deshaun Watson. My other belief would be you're going to find some sort of running back who was the guy that had starred for the Patriots for years, James White. You know, J guy did nothing. But you should catch about nine, ten balls per week. There's going to be a back like that here. You're going to have Nick here to be the hammer, but you're going to find somebody, you know, maybe it's a Dimitri Felton, but somebody like that who is going to be a huge part of, okay, they covered everything vertically down the field. 
I'm going to take the gimme here. And I have a back who at worst is going to get in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Gee, this is, I mean, for anybody that didn't think that this is where it's headed, where it's going, or why it's even going this way, you're just straight up fooling yourself. Once you signed him to the dotted line, once you handed him $238 million guaranteed, it was not so he could turn around and hand the ball off to Nick Chubb so Nick Chubb could win a rushing title. They, they feel that this is the arm that will make the difference. Uh, that, so much so that they didn't even entertain Baker anymore while they still had him under contract. They just said, you know what? We need to go as high up the food chart as we possibly can. And, you know, if you're ready or not, and it's going to start Sunday, I will be stunned if they don't throw the ball minimum 40 times in Washington. Well, listen, I don't got no problem with that. Here's where, here's what I want to say. A, a, a Stefanski organization, if that's where you're going and you're going to go all the way in, we'll go be, be prepared to go all the way in like the Patrick Mahomes and the Josh Allens and be prepared to, to say, all right, well, we, we got to make sure that our weapons is of the caliber of these dudes. Don't put no 238 out there in Deshaun Watson and you have Burrow with three good receivers. Don't put no caliber, uh, 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 you know, if you want to throw the ball, understand what you got to do to get to throw the ball. Yeah, you got some decent receivers. You need a couple more because it ain't Stephon Diggs and Gabriel. It is, it's not uh, Jamar Chase, uh, Tyler Boyd, and T. Higgins. Heck, if you want to be, do it like that, it ain't Travis Kelsey and whoever you want to throw else out there. You got to make sure that you guys get the same type of caliber of players. If you, it's an arms race. If that's the big boy game you're going to play, understand scared money don't make no money. Don't be trying to come out here with no regular off the, uh, the woods of the world. And I like Bell, <laughs> but you might want to get your mind together um, because this is a new world out here. So if you're going to do it, Go up top. I'm all for it. The time Deshaun came back made it tricky because so much time was missed. And then obviously you got yourself in a couple of instances here, uh, you know, where maybe the weather didn't necessarily dictate it. You did still throw the ball 31 times. So if you want any, you know, reading to the tea leaves of why they threw the ball as much as they did Saturday against the Saints, it's because they feel it's the biggest opportunity to get the ball down the field faster. It is just that simple. With all that being said, um, and heading into Sunday's game. Um, this is going to be a different defensive line, and the Browns are used to seeing on Sunday. We're going to get to that here as we transition into segment three. Jeff Lloyd, Garrett Bush, your latest Locked on Browns. If you are interested, Thursday night, Tennessee Titans, Dallas Cowboys. Man, you want to talk about putting together a lineup. Dak Prescott, CeeDee Lamb, Ezekiel Elliott, Tony Pollard, bunch of ballers on that Dallas Cowboys offense. It is simple and easy to play. Here's what you do. You pick two to five players, and if they go score more or less than the prize picks projections, you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. You're not competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Prize picks offers projections on any sport that you watch, the NFL, the NBA, MLB, NHL, men's, women's, collegiate basketball. Heck, if you're all basketball as you fancy, they got you covered there as well. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's just that easy. Safe and fast withdrawals. Currently operational in over 30 states and Canada. Download the Prize Picks app or go to prizepicks.com and sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code LOCKED ON. You deposit 100, Prize Picks will give you 100. You deposit 50, Prize Picks will give you 50. Don't forget to the promo code LOCKED ON at sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. Welcome back to Locked on Browns podcast. G. Bush, Jeff Lloyd in the building. We're here talking a little bit before the Washington Commanders game. Two games in a season left to go. But don't forget, just because it's two games in a season don't really mean that the videos stop. They don't call it <laughs> your team every day. We still got responsibilities, and we will be covering your team, the Cleveland Browns, every single day. So when the season stops, me and Jeff don't. So to keep in uh, contact with everything we got on, make sure you follow at Locked On Browns on Twitter, uh, and you can catch all of our shows as well on YouTube. Uh, over four thousand with that great success, and don't forget we are on the Roku app. You can you can check out us on the Roku app, and you can definitely check us out wherever you download your podcast. Now, Jeff, when you said something, uh, you know, during the segue, and I truly believe that this would probably be one of the better defensive line lines get going. Um, you you definitely got a, a Montez Sweat, who's a guy who's long 
has the ability to get upfield. Um, those guys are probably one of the most athletic. We talk about Miles Garrett and Jadavion Clowney being athletic. Let's talk about uh, Chase Young and, and Montez Sweat. Not to mention the defensive tackles that they have. So you got you got guys that can get after the quarterback on the defensive end position as well as the defensive tackle position. And that's very rare to see uh, in, in terms of defensive tackles being able to get upfield and, and disrupt the pass and, and stop the run a little bit. Um, before Chase Young got hurt, I thought that, you know, they had pretty much, to me, a top three defensive line and arguably one of the best defensive line just because of the versatility they had is stopping a run as well as the pass. So, you know, they're going to go up against a group of guys um, and the offensive line is going to have his hands full. And this is going to be a big game for some guys like Jedrick Wills, Jack Conklin, because here's the thing. One thing that we got to We got to remember is this. They just gave Jack Conklin that money. Now, we known as a, a physical running team up front, road graders, guys that move guys off the line of scrimmage in the run game. Well, that's we just talked about it in segment two. That's not what we're gonna be doing no more. That's not that's not what, what the focal point is. It's no longer wow, look how per, it's gonna be wow. Well, the Cleveland Browns have kept Deshaun Watson upright all game. They're going to have to change a lot of what they do in their approach, whether that's their body types whether that's the way they go about training cuz now you, I want agility I want kick slide I want I want I, I want to be able to to get to the speed rushers you can't lean on nobody no more so I this is going to be a change not only philosophically in the way you call plays but it's also going to be a change in the way your offensive linemen are going to have to execute and this is going to be a very good barometer as to what they need to work on especially at right and left tackles dealing with Montez Sweat and Chase Young, even though he's coming back off injury. Yes, Montez Sweat. Now, if anybody remembers, obviously, he was a darling of ours during his draft cycle. He was something we really, really thought would make an impact for the Cleveland Browns. Then they made the trade. Olivier Vernon came to town. No first-round pick. Montez Sweat off to Washington. Chase Young, and I don't know if there's been a clarification on it yet, but you know, everybody kind of saw the picture. Is he coming back from two ACLs? Currently ill this week. Um, but obviously a big part. But what is different about this Washington uh, Washington Commanders defensive line? You got 15 sacks from the interior. 15 sacks from the interior. Jonathan Allen, hell of a player. My already free agent darling for the Cleveland Browns. Deron Payne, nine and a half sacks this year. We've been trying to get him. I mean, Already. you know, look, Deron Payne, while you're in town, if you want to come out a day early, maybe look at a couple places to live, you know, get an idea of the cuisine, get yourself comfortable, because I'm going to tell you right now, come that first day in March, you know, legal tampering period, which means they'll be talking to your agents at the Combine. Get ready, Deron. It's going to be a full court pressure coming from the Cleveland Browns. So if you are not tagged by the Washington Commanders, uh, uh, you are going to Andrew Barry might be at your doorstep. Just be ready for that. But you talk about this and now just the depth overall on this defensive line where everybody can get after the quarterback. Chase Young, whether it was one AC one ACL or two ACL, you think about a defensive line where Chase Young is your fourth best guy. That's terrifying. That is absolutely terrifying. Montez Sweat, I, I Sweat, every bit of six foot four, two seventy five, athletic, long, and then these two guys. And this is where Ethan Postick returning obviously helps you a ton. But this is what you're going to start to see because, look, nobody's going where. They are committed, obviously, very much so to this offensive line to 2023. And just real quick, Jack Conklin re-signing doesn't mean anything as far as Jedrick Wills. So everybody is trying to paint one picture by looking at another. One thing does ha doesn't have anything to do with the other. But this is the test. And, you know, you're, you're going to be now a throwing team. And you're going to get yourself in weeks, in matchups, like this, where there's a defensive line that is excellent, excellent getting after the passer. These guys are quality. These guys are studs. They are long. They get home. They get home with frequency. This is going to be another week. And look, I'm never equating Deshaun Watson as a runner like Lamar Jackson. But if you're Deshaun Watson, you've got to understand my legs can help me. There were times last week where he held on to the ball too long. 
There were times where, hey, if you got off your spot that quickly on a frozen field, it's really difficult to adjust. The other thing is, you know, once you get going, you're Deshaun Watson. You are an elite athlete at the as far as a runner at the quarterback position. Don't be afraid to use that. And no, we nobody ever wants it to be anything, or you want a quarterback to leave the pocket too early. But understanding that, you know, an incompletion as opposed to even four or five yards, you get yourself to a third and three as opposed to a third and eight. It leaves yourself a ton more uh, that the, you know you can go through the playbook and then you can go through that lovely little Paul D. But that's the chart and see what you got to make it all work. Um, but yeah, gee, this is going to be a, a firm, firm test because I mean, I, I didn't do much, but I mean, to look up and think about a, a, a pair of defensive tackles with a combined 15 sacks with two games to go. It's just absolutely nuts. It's bonkers. These guys are about as good as they come. And it's one of the reasons that the commanders are 7 7 and 1 and still possibly have a chance at a playoff berth. Yeah, they, they, they're they going to present some some issues for the Browns. They they, they really will. Um, but here's the thing um, you'll get a chance. It's all about a barometer. Now, for me, I'm just looking to see who, like, because I'm looking and watching. I, I'm, I'm going to be able to see who out here playing around. Who out here that really want to do it? Who out here is just to compete? Who gonna do it for the love of the game, or who gonna make business decisions? Because you know you gonna go up against a Washington team that still want to play, and you can come out here and get embarrassed. And two things I know about is I played on a one in ten team, and them games at the end of the season were brutal because the guys had checked out, and it was just like you know they it just was nothing left to pay for out there. And you out here trying to give us you get all and do what you can, and you hurt. And there's another thing that you got to take in consideration too. Is you if you're going out there half stepping, you are gonna get hurt. If you're going out there and you're not going a hundred percent, you are gonna get hurt. So guys better not be standing around no piles, looking around and saying, "Man, I'm gonna just make it through this" because it don't work that way. So it's gonna be a good opportunity. And in the last game of the season, you got the Steelers. And by and and, and by the way, I mean we know Jimmy Haslam. I mean I call myself the Duke of knee jerk reactions. <laughs> but Jimmy Haslam, don't come out here and get beat bad these last two games, or you might have an issue with, with, with yourself and trying to figure out whether or not you're going to have a job next year too. So it's, things can happen with two games left. Don't get it twisted. Oh, uh, no. And look, you know, and for some of these guys, you know, you're, you, you know, you're basically standing in, you know, basically the waiting room. Are you part of 2023 yet? It's not known, but you know, Hey, you got, two, right. you got two weeks to go out there and prove yourself. David Bell, Michael Woods, all these young receivers, somebody can do a couple plays for themselves, certainly going to help their standing here. As Look, they're going to be challenged, but, you know, at least say, hey, you know, we're going to bring somebody in to compete as opposed to saying we're bringing somebody in to replace you. I mean, you don't want to get yourself into that spot, and there are going to be, you know, there are going to be a lot of moving on. There's going to be a lot of moving parts here within the coaching rooms, certainly within the roster itself. These are all things that are going to happen. we got more coming for you this week. we Get you the crossover, you know, and then me and G will get some final thoughts as the week closes out here and get your pregame show. Browns back to Sundays, one o'clock, Washington Commanders. He is Garrett Bush, host here at Lockdown Browns, of course, part of the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show, the Barbershop 92.3, the fan. Make sure you are following at G Bush 91, myself, Jeff Lloyd, at Jeff underscore LJ underscore Lloyd. Show itself at Lockdown Browns, follow back account. We appreciate you all for making Lockdown Browns your first listen, whether it's on your favorite podcast. Podcast platform, whether on YouTube and of course Roku. Go ahead, check it out. Search Locked On Cleveland Sports. You'll find Guardians, you'll find Browns, you'll find Cavaliers, you'll find the Ultimate Cleveland Sports Show. Uh, again, we just appreciate you all for you know being along for this. I know this season is not ending where any of you are happy. I certainly, certainly understand. And you know, again, it's, you hate to tell a fan base like this. You know, next year, next year, next year, next year. I mean, how many times you all heard it? You get sick and tired of hearing it. But sadly, that is where we are at. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on the LOB. Let's go, Browns.